song was waiting for Pastor Dan's emphasis. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, which is a strong foundation upon which we can build our faith, build our strength and power, because your word cannot fail. Your word is forever established in heaven. Your word will never fade away. We stand on the foundation of your word, knowing that your word is our foundation. Thank you, O oh Lord, that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. That as long as we follow the light of the Lord, we will never be lost in darkness. Now may the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, as the words of my mouth. These things I lift up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, okay, we um, had the reading of the scripture. It came from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. The title of this message Break down the walls that hinder us and fight back. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Amen. Break down the walls that hinder us and fight back. Brothers and sisters, we must be prepared. We must be equipped. We must be fully armed. We must be made ready to go up against the wiles of the devil. Set, willing, able, fortified, encouraged, fitted out for battle. You can say amen. amen. Come on, because we're getting ready to go out there now. This is your pep talk. Christians face a spiritual conflict with Satan and a horde of evil spirits. These powers of darkness are the spiritual forces of evil. They constitute a great multitude, and they are organized into an empire of evil with rank and order. The children of disobedience and everyone who is without Christ are controlled by the prince of the power of the air. Satan binds their minds to the truth of God. They are enslaved to sin and to the cravings of the sinful nature. Because of the spiritual condition of unregenerate people, they cannot understand or accept uh, the truth without the grace of God. Therefore, those that have ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God is the commander in chief of our lives. We need to see him as such and we need to res respect him as such. In order to do God's work, we need to use God's weapons, not our own. Our warfare is not against flesh and blood. And for that reason, 
Weak, worldly weapons will not do the job. We need weapons that are God-powered, mighty through God. Weapons whose purpose is for pulling down and demolishing strongholds and anything that opposes God's will. Here, the written word is referring specifically to warfare in the spirit against arrogant, rebellious ideas and attitudes and against every high thing like pride that's opposed to the true knowledge of God. The aim is to bring every disobedient thought into obedience to Christ. Oh, man. I'm going to start calling you the un-amen church. Okay, then you better start amening. Amen. Amen. God tells us how to live life, and what he tells us is his will. And for that reason, we are to study what God has said. We should study God's word, learn and gain all the knowledge we can about his will, about how to live. Amen. We have to study to show ourselves approved and learn uh, 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 until the knowledge of God's will just floods our souls. Uh, floods us to such a degree that doing his will flows out into our conduct and behavior, our conversation, our actions, and our deeds. We must seek God and we will find him when we search for him with all our heart. Christian warfare involves bringing all our thoughts into alignment with Christ's will. Failure to do so will lead to wickedness and spiritual death. Use the following steps to bring your thoughts life under Christ's lordship. Be aware that God knows every thought and that nothing is hidden from him. Know that we will have to give an account to God for our thoughts as well as our words and deeds. Be aware that the mind is a battleground. Some thoughts originate with us while others come directly from the enemy. To take captive every thought requires warfare against both our sinful nature and against satanic forces. Consistently and faithfully resist and reject evil and unwholesome thoughts in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that we as believers overcome our adversary by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony and by persistently saying no to the devil no to temptation, and no to sin. We need to be determined in focusing our minds on Christ and on heavenly things rather than earthly things. For the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. Fill your mind with God's Word and with those things that are decent, excellent, and praiseworthy. Always be careful what your eyes see and your ears hear. Deliberately refuse to let our eyes be an instrument for lust. Do not set any worthless or evil thing before your eyes, whether, whether it be in books, or magazines, uh, pictures, television, uh, television programs, in movies, videos, internet, and especially in real life. Just like Paul, we are only weak humans. But we don't need to use human plans and human methods to win our battles that God, uh, uh, God, uh, oh, Heavenly Father, help me, Holy Ghost. 
we, we, we don't need to use human plans and human methods to win our battles, uh, uh, but with God's mighty weapons are available to us as we fight against Satan's strongholds. Yes, yes. We Christians must choose whose methods to use, God's methods or the world's methods. In the Bible, we are assured that God's mighty weapons of prayer, faith, hope, love, God's word, the Holy Spirit, and the gifts of the Spirit are powerful and effective. These weapons can break down the proud human arguments against God and the walls that Satan builds to keep people from finding God. When dealing with the pride that keeps people from a relationship with Christ, we may be tempted to use our own methods, but nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, can break down those barriers like God's weapons. For though we walk in the flesh, this scripture is talking about Christians, real Christians, true Christians, the complete and total condition of each servant of Christ. To walk in the flesh is to live in the flesh. The inerrant word of God informs us that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. This expression leads us to understand infirmities or weaknesses of good Christians. Because if we walk in the flesh, then that means we are subject to all the infirmities and weaknesses of the flesh. Uh, which would make us prone to all sorts of sickness and disease. And as long as our connection to the flesh or to the body continues, we are also subject to the assaults of temptation. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, 12 and 13, we are led to understand that those who are not flesh, <clears throat> flesh and blood are demons. Those over, over whom Satan has control. They are not mere fantasies. They're very real. We face a powerful army whose goal is to defeat Christ's church. Let me say that again. We face a powerful army whose goal is to defeat Christ's church. When we believe in Christ, these beings become our enemies. And they try every device, every trick in the book to turn us away from Jesus and back to sin. Even though we are assured of victory, we must engage in the struggle until Christ returns because Satan is continuously attacking everyone, and I mean everyone who is on the Lord's side. We need supernatural power to defeat Satan, and God has provided this by giving us his Holy Spirit. His spirit works within us on the inside and his armor surrounds us on the outside. When we are prepared to receive him, we are saturated with the manifestations of the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, brothers and sisters, when you feel discouraged, remember Jesus' words to Peter, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may, may, may devour. When mankind fell into sin, uh, Satan became the ruler of this world by usurpation. He grabbed a hold of something that wasn't his and took it over. And now he dominates the whole world. He patrols this earth. And he commands a host of evil spirits through whom he enslaves and keeps ca captive 
those who are without Christ. Only we who are believers in Christ have been delivered from his power. Yet as a roaring lion, uh, he remains a threat to us and seeks to destroy anyone who abandons the protection of God. Through our faith in the blood of Christ, our spiritual warfare by the Holy Spirit, and our prayers to God, we are fully equipped to defeat Satan's schemes, to resist him, and to stand firm in the faith. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so our speech and our preaching should not be with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that our faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. There's limited value in knowing that Jesus Christ really lived. There's a reduced value in knowing that he was an historical person. There is some value in knowing that Jesus Christ really is the Savior or that he is truly is the Son of God. But there's not enough value in knowing that other religions and positions are not true. Our salvation cannot stand in the human knowledge and wisdom of men. Human arguments and appeals may seem rational and logical, but they have no spiritual power. No man, no speech, and no preaching can convert a human soul and impart eternal life to it. Only God can do such a thing. Therefore, we, the children of God, must speak and preach under the anointed influence and power of God's spirit. Anything short of God's spirit places our faith in the knowledge and wisdom of men. The crying need is for God's people to be controlled by God's spirit so that God can demonstrate his power through us to a lost and dying world. Amen. We read in Acts 1 and 8, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Christians must see everyone and everything from a godly point of view. Amen. Those involved in immorality and pride are to be pitied because of their slavery to sin and Satan. Those who are without Christ are still responsible for their sins. God gives every human being a measure of faith and light and grace in order to seek God and escape the bondage of sin by responding to Christ through faith. The grace of God is given to each one of us to accomplish the will of God. This grace is an energizing strength that flows from the risen Christ and operates through the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. The Holy Spirit empowered the, the Apostle Stephen to perform great wonders and miracles among the people and gave him great wisdom to preach the gospel in such a way that his opponents could not contradict his arguments. Jesus said in Luke, 21 and 15, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. The work of the ministry is warfare, definitely not after the flesh because it is a spiritual warfare with spiritual enemies and for spiritual purposes. And though we walk in the flesh or live it in the body and deal with life just as other men, 
Yet in our conflicts and warfare, we must not operate by the ways of the flesh, and we should not plan to please the flesh. The flesh must be crucified along with its affections and lusts. It must be held within limits, controlled and kept under. The doctrines of the gospel and disciplines of the church are the weapons of our warfare, and these are not carnal. Our strength is enclosed in the power of truth and the meekness of wisdom. We must be persuaded and committed to the gospel way of godliness in our duty. Mm, not driven by force of arms, and so the weapons of our warfare are mighty and very powerful. The evidence of truth is convincing and forceful. This is through God, because they are accomplished by him and, and, and come with his blessing, which makes all opposition to fall before his victorious gospel. There is opposition against the uh, uh, gospel by the power of sin and Satan in the hearts of men. Ignorance, prejudice, uh, lust for physical gratification and material things are Satan's strongholds in the souls of sons. Vain imaginations, carnal reasoning, and high thoughts or proud conceit in others. They exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. These are some of the ways the devil attempts to keep men from faith and obedience to the gospel. There are, uh, these are some of the ways he attempts to secure possession of the hearts of men. He tries to take them over as his own house, his own property. But the conquest that we have is through prayer and meditation, day and night, in the word of God, Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb, the Holy Spirit, and gifts of the Spirit. These strongholds are pulled down by the gospel through the grace and power of God. The transformation of change within the soul is the conquest of Satan in the soul. Finally, brothers and sisters. Jesus promised his true disciples, his true followers, authority over the power of Satan and his cohorts. By knowing Jesus and the power of his resurrection and receiving delegated authority from the right, right hand of the majesty who sits on high, we can confront and break the power that demons exert over us and others. Amen. Amen. As disciples in God's kingdom, we are called to wage intense spiritual warfare through the power of the Holy Spirit. In this way, we can set others free from the powers of darkness. According to Mark, 3 and 27, we can declare war against Satan according to God's purpose. We can enter Satan's house, any place he has a stronghold, attack and overpower him by prayer and proclaiming of God's word and destroy his weapons of demonic deception and temptations and carry off his possessions delivering those who have been held captive by Satan's power and handing them over to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and sanctification through faith in Jesus Christ. We should recognize that we are not in a conflict against flesh and blood, but against the powers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. We should live before God, fervently committed to his truth and righteousness. We should have faith that Satan's power can be broken in any specific area of his domain and realize that we have powerful spiritual weapons uh, given by God for the destruction of Satan's strongholds. We can proclaim the gospel of the kingdom in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. We can challenge Satan and his powers directly by knowing and applying the authority of Jesus' name, 
by using God's word. We must understand our need uh, to spend time uh, in God's presence. Yeah. Determined and fully committed, we must expect the spirit to transform us yeah. into the image of God's glorious son yeah. by confessing the power of the cross and the effectiveness of Jesus' blood. Yeah. Uh, by praying in the spirit, by fasting, yeah. and by driving out demons, Pray for the Holy Spirit to convict the lost concerning sin, righteousness, and the coming judgment. Pray for and eagerly desire the manifestation of the Spirit through the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, supernatural faith, gifts of healing, tongues, signs and wonders, and miracles. Then we can break down the walls that hinder us and fight back. Then we can get around uh, the obstacles that block our path and move forward. Yeah. Then we can recognize the diversions that lead us astray and stay on the right path because God has ordered it in our lives. Yeah. And with Christ, we are more than conquerors. Yeah. We are not victims in a fallen world, uh, but we are more than conquerors. Yeah. We are the vanquishers, the overcomers, yeah. the victors. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. 